I know what I did wrong. Your mom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm not gonna even discuss it with you because. <laughs> 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 What did you do wrong? Tell me. I've set the unit uh, initiative uh, on low of none. I had to micromanage everything, and that's not what I'm used to. Well, you made it. You're pouring in. You're just taking them over now with your good old mounted infantry. You might want to start moving some other units, though, to start pushing up north. Oh, or there not. it goes. Works. GG no re. Ceylon is India. And more rubber oh, for the world. Oh, that cost me so much. Well, I mean, look at it this way. At least it wasn't Shibi's invasion of France. Just shut up. <laughs> he literally did what you did, except there was so much waiting for him. He was actually able to land, but there was so much waiting for him that he lost like 80 units in like 10 seconds. Still hurts, says Shibi. <laughs> Any kudeta? What are you plotting, Narfi? Nothing yet. You're moving so many troops to Calcutta. Yeah, I'm already moving them, so I have them on location. Location for what? Pakistan. I think you'd want most of your units in the west. Yeah. Not because I want to take the colony first. Alright, hey, we, we tried to warn them. Due to your, um... Initiative now, by the way, most of the units are just leaving once they get there, for the record. Oh yeah, Pakistan's kind of powerful right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot that. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, I don't even think you're ready to fight just Pakistan, let alone also take their colony. Pakistan is essentially your equal right now. Well, their colony is not much to worry about. I mean, even I over when i went to war with pakistan even i overestimated the colony so it's not that the colony kind of is something over. to over like overestimate it's just the fact that he would have all his units all the way over there and then he'd just get swarmed by a bunch of pakistanis oh no i know that's what i'm saying like you don't need a whole lot like shit you could probably take the colony with just like 10 units <laughs> i can see that uh narfi has started or has been inspired by my excessive rail lines leading to production facilities <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to increase the supply overall. Don't just put an airbase. Uh, put like a supply depot with the airbase. You can also just put like a couple supply depots. That's actually cheaper than putting an airbase to begin with, I believe. Yeah, but you think I need to? I have pretty good supply in the south already. Well, I mean, your bar on a lot of this oil is about 60% filled. Meaning, you can still get more oil out of these. You mean in the West? Yes. There you go. I'm amazed I've never really posed this question, but why is the symbol for your relations on the state screen the state of Texas? On whose? Everyone. In your diplomatic relations on the state tab, whether you look at it in the actual diplomatic relations tab, or you just take a peek under the domestic oh. bar, yeah, it's always the state of Texas. Why is it always the state of Texas? I don't mind. I'm just wondering. Why the state of Texas? That's something you'd have to ask the developers. <laughs> Maybe they are from Texas. I kind of just assume that they're from California. I've gotten my military personnel up to 360,000. It's grown a lot and it's still slowly growing. And my military is like 20 units. 21 if you include the one aircraft I made, which by the way is a zero. I only have fucking 67,000 military personnel total. I have a 300,000. I'm just stretching mine to the fucking limit. This still isn't even enough combined with everything that I have to garrison everything I would want in Japan. Like if I needed garrisons in a war, this still isn't even enough of the garrisons, let alone a military. And that's why I'm still just doing my best to stretch it. This is actually giving me one of the highest deployed militaries in the whole game right now, as it slowly goes upwards. Damn, Narfi, you still don't have enough rubber production. No, I don't. There's still a lot more on Ceylon to be exploited. Yep. I'm pretty much positive on all these raw resources now, except for rubber, because there's nowhere for me to harvest rubber until I take something over. I'm gonna unlock uranium and see if I can actually profit by selling it. Right now, the market price would indicate that I could profit. The only thing that I really need more of right now is electricity. I just find it crazy that I only built one singular ring of military goods production, and that was enough 
to make me the third largest producer of military goods in the entire world. Yeah, all right. I also have some building. Israel is slowly getting more and more money to work with, I see. Slowly but oh, surely yeah. doing better, getting up off the ground. Little by little. I'm pacing myself, that's for damn sure. Despite all my inflation, I've somehow managed to amass the second highest treasury in the world. Sounds like I should spend it. Get yeah, some more inflation. <laughs> Max that shit out. Hell yeah, let's fucking go! Let's see, where could I do with placing the next naval production? I'd That's like to spread it out a little bit. Fucking water. <laughs> let's say I do something roughly like I did last time during the PvP when I took over Japan. Uh, if only I had actual coal I could exploit, but... Meh. We'll put a naval port right next to Fukuoka. And that's where the naval production will go, along with this seaport. Oh, that's good, an actual consumer. And then right here, down in price. this is perfect for three more land and another air. So it's going to take like a year for all of this to finish, about half a year for some of it. And once it's done, my total military production will double, will make ships, planes, and land units at twice the rate. As of right now, we don't even appear on the top list for military production of units. We scroll down and we can find India pretty easily, and then we're down here, underneath India. Let's see, where is this roughly on the bar? Kind of at like the 66% point two thirds, so we're pretty good in the world. We have more than Shibi has. I think Shibi's been building some more as well. We build all this and we will get ahead of India, who hasn't built any production yet at all. I'm probably going to build a similar setup to what I did last time, in terms of building something for roughly each island, you know, one setup for here, one setup for here, one for here, one for up here, and then doubling down later if I need to, but ideally taking some things over and building up production in those places, like ideally I plan on going for Indonesia as well because it's a lot of rubber there, it's more islands to help me dominate the Pacific, and it's pretty close to me in general. It shouldn't have any units, so it should be pretty much undefended except for garrisons. Or I can endeavor to go after something like Siam, which has rubber as well, and Burma, maybe. We'll see. North Vietnam could always be on the table. Or I could just go into Central America and take over some of these really weak and easy to take over countries. So I dominate this part of the Pacific, maybe. Can start building some stuff up over here. Get some of the land productions they already have. Build up all of this vast amount of rubber. I haven't really decided yet. I have somehow turned into a rubber exporter. The price has gone up enough compared to my GDP, despite my vast amount of inflation, that I can actually sell my oil on the market for a profit. Although the demand for oil right now is not necessarily the highest, especially with India starting to pump a lot more oil out. His GDP is the lowest out of all of us, so he would actually have the easiest time selling his oil on the market out of all three of us by far. So he's definitely profiting from it right now if I'm profiting from it. Coal is not profitable, when is it ever? Metal ore is surprisingly profitable, but I don't think this market is very large and capable to be taken advantage of. He's actually importing. Yeah, you know, I'm seeing a track record here where Narfi just builds oil. You know, he doesn't care about anything else. Rubber and oil, this is the only two things he cares about, interestingly. The uranium market is static. It's kind of leveled out on profitability for now. It's still profitable to make electricity, which we saw at the beginning of both Cold War PVPs. That will probably eventually change, but if we don't keep up in terms of GDP, maybe, who knows, that won't change. My unemployment is so low and my inflation is so high, I'm amazed I'm even doing well on money right now anyway. Timber is going back and forth between being profitable to sell on the world market and not, so I'm not really investing into anything like that just yet. I don't actually have a lot more oil on land to exploit, so I figure I might as well make it. I can't build it anywhere where there's a town, so that invalidates a lot of the production that I could have. And I think that right there is all of it. Yeah, that's all of it. Six more and then I'm done. That's all the oil I can make that's not at sea. So whether it stays profitable to sell or not, I'll at least know where I stand there. I do plan on getting the tech eventually, of course, to build the oil derricks, which seems to be where half of our natural oil is placed. And a lot of my targets will also have oil for me to utilize, such as Siam, such as the East Indies. Central America doesn't have any of that. Mexico sure does. Oh, they have international spots. Cool. 
Cuba's always an option, yeah. I should look more in my own territory, my own ballpark first before I start looking all the way out there, however. We did finish some more of our hydro plants. We're currently only building four, so I think we can go ahead and increase what we're building a little bit more. I'll get rid of these agricultures here, and then I'll replace them with hydros, build three more hydros on this spot. And I'll build one over here at Fukuoka itself, where we have a bunch of stuff. I just figured I'd fit the one hydro in there that I can. Eventually, we may be able to put more there if I start deconning things over here, but a lot of stuff there is actually rather important, so a lot of it probably will not be deconned. What y'all doing? Your mom. You wish. I'm just building. More rubber, I hope. I'm building everything I can. Oh, it's not enough. Build more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you really gave up trying to keep that inflation low, huh? 18.7, you're still building? Yeah, I have to. I'm at 20.6 at the moment. I just keep slowly building more stuff. Things where I could use more. I've gotten most of, most of my raw materials under control. Certain ones are like kind of on the edge of being self-sufficient and not. I'm building the rest of my oil just because I have almost no oil. I cannot build the sea base oil yet, which is like half the oil I have access to, unfortunately. But I got self-sufficient on pretty much most other things. Timbers back and forth, rubber I just don't have any of, and electricity I need more of slash I'm researching the improved power grid three. Same. I have a minus of electri electricity of 800,000. Holy fuck. Nice. No wonder it's profitable to sell electricity. <laughs> <laughs> ah, damn. Eight hundred thousand. What's your solution yeah, to that? Yeah, I'm building, but I can't keep up. Oh, you're just are you? What are you building? Are you? You're just building hydro. Yeah, no, you won't be able to, especially if you're expanding like your industry or military goods production, which you probably are. Yes, you are. I see a bunch of mill good stuff finishing. If you're building more stuff that uses electricity slash if your population gets richer and with your population can suddenly afford to buy electricity, uh, that's gonna keep going up. Hydro is a very slowly growing thing. You can certainly build it. It's very nice to build. But if you want electricity fast, it's the wrong option. If you want fast electricity, you need to be building coal-based or petrol-based. That's the fast electricity. Hydro is very, very slow, but it makes you not dependent on any resources. It's also very, very expensive initially, but cheaper in the long run. So if you do end up wanting to grow it faster, Stop building hydro. Otherwise, don't worry about it. I'll build more hydro of my own, and eventually I'll sell it to you. Everybody wins. <laughs> you got electricity, I got some money. Someone's got to be a consumer. Yo, go take over China. Let's, let's confound this. Luckily for me, there's actually nowhere where I can even build hydro. <laughs> How is that lucky? Yeah. Don't gotta worry about it. <laughs> Build be cheap, burning, polluted coal. Hey, someone's got to use coal. Coal is so abundant. It's everywhere. But, like, nobody uses it. By this point in history, everyone was already switching to petrol. So the usage of it is very low in the world. I make six fucking coal mines, and I can cover my entire country. And it's not profitable to sell at all. Definitely a great resource for cost efficiency. Especially because the coal plants at this point in history are actually producing twice the amount of electricity as the petrol plants are. So even if the production cost for coal ends up being higher, if, if it's not like double, then you're still getting a good deal. So are we planning on making any allies or anything? Who are you thinking of? I'm just wondering, because I'm the only one of us that actually has an ally aside from each other, because I started out with an alliance with the US. Yeah, I tried to befriend them, but it takes too, uh, too long. Yeah, I literally can't seem to really ally everybody, especially since I took over Jordan. I'm friendly with the US, but they won't take an alliance. The Same. people don't like me. Rez, how did you go about increasing your reservist? I literally just like went to theater, uh, maxed out garrisons. Okay, she you know same. how. You did that with China. Yeah, but China I had like over a billion fucking people. So having reservists was never an issue. Yeah, my total uh, personnel right now is nearing 500k, so I have about five times my total personnel in about nine months, I think. Maybe a year, actually. At this rate, I will be at 900k 
by next year, although that's only if there's enough spots to actually recruit that many garrisons. A lot of my places are actually capping out on garrisons, so I might be hitting a yeah, wall so here mine. soon. Mine have already capped out. I can't even place anymore. Yeah, you need more, like, facilities to be able to place more if you want to exploit them for this purpose. Otherwise, another way is just deploy your units, you know, keep deploying them. And then they take uh, personnel, which makes you need to recruit more personnel, that kind of thing. Damn, India. Even with all your losses, you still have the biggest military out of all of us. Yeah, I'm maxing it out. I'm trying to. I started with 200,000. The military campaign in India is very effective. As Japan, dude, it fucking sucks. Every day I can only recruit like another 1,000. When I was playing the US, I could recruit like 10, 15,000 every day. It's only like 1,000 right now. I recruit uh, 3,000 a day. Well, lucky you. To recruit oh, enough that. men to staff a complement of military production as I tend to build it, 3, 1, and 1, would take me about 26 days, I think, roughly. 26 days of recruitment just to get the personnel to staff that. Forget about deploying any more units. That's a whole month dedicated to just setting up production. All right, let's play spin the bottle. Whoever loses uh, has to invade China. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we both gonna invade <laughs> and split it. <laughs> Are you guys actually seriously gonna invade China? <laughs> have fun. I'm not gonna invade anything right now. I don't have a military. <laughs> Even if China has lost 243 units in their failed attempts to invade Formosa, they start out with like, what, 600 anyway? Plus they have a current military production of 16. Have they been building more? I think they built a couple more. Cause I think they start out with 13 land. So they're pumping out like maybe 16 more units every month. It's been like did I, 16 months. How did I lose 70 million fucking dollars right off the goddamn bat? What the hell happened? Too much deployment. Too many units. Oh, I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> Meh. Whatever. Did you build something? A supply depot, but not. I don't think that was going to knock out like 70 right off the fucking bat. <laughs> oh fuck, even a seaport takes over 8,000 staff complement. What the fuck? I've really never learned to value having personnel as much as I value it right now. There hasn't been a single second since the start of this game where my labor shortage has improved. I'm down to 2.2% unemployment. That's hilarious. I have a seaplane, patrol plane, and it's actually marked as amphibious. How does that even work in this game? Can I just fucking land it on the ocean? Is, is that how that- does that work? Uh, seaplanes, yeah. I, but in this game, I've never oh, had yeah. a patrol plane actually marked as amphibious before. But guess what? It's time for Israel to expand even more. Yes, yes. Oh my. To where? Oh, I see. Lebanon. Love how if I select the battle zone for Jerusalem, it actually has it as Damascus. That's funny. The war begins, and they don't stand a fucking chance. Are well, we doing this on fastest, boys? It's low. I don't think I need to decrease the speed for this. <laughs> you're already up to Beirut, and you already took Beirut. Yeah, this is pretty much over already. And hey, you get some more military production. Speaking of military production, my next military production is ready. I just need to get back. Let me just cancel all, all the garrisons. Get back enough personnel to actually activate them. That's three new land productions up and running. Hell fucking yeah, the air and the naval come next. Get the garrisons going again. I have doubled my land production to six. I can now pump out more units. And soon I'll get the non-tradable of military production level three. And when I get that, I should be able to access much better technology and designs. I was thinking of just going for the American M75, but I'm thinking I'm going to research something that I can actually research myself instead. Although that's still another half a year until I get that tech. <laughs> I'm barely going to finish my first tech. Improved aircraft piston engines. <laughs> and then improved so power grid 3. Power grid. I'm barely going to start that shit. Someone do a mass deploy order or something? No. Negatory. Yeah, maybe it was me. <laughs> the theater control thing. Maybe, I don't know. But now it's frozen. I'll just give it a moment. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, I, don't think any of us, I don't think any of us can do a mass deployment. Yeah. But, <laughs> I, I have like 20 units. My domestics are doing really, really well at this point in the game. My immigration's up there. My emigration is very low. My births are up there. My deaths are, well, I mean, 
close to the births, but I think that's pretty natural. My spending on healthcare and everything is at the recommended settings, no higher. Technically, the food price affects population as well. I don't think any of the other two actually know that. Looks like we finished all of our oil. This is literally all the oil I can make. And it is still profitable, so that's good. But this is my limited amount of oil production. I need these to get any more, and that might make it unprofitable once I get those. I don't know. There's still room for more metal ore. It's still profitable on the market. I don't imagine there's a lot of wiggle room, though, for actually buying and selling. Well, actually, look, the U.S. is a huge importer of it. The U.S. is probably the biggest importer of it, actually. Yeah, dude. And they're probably importing a lot of what they're getting from the Soviet Union. Well, I don't know if I pointed this out already, but there's no more Soviet colonies. In this mod, the Soviet Union just has all the colonies, and they're all loyal. So, yeah, that's pretty different. So they have all of Ukraine's metal ore production right now, too. China's importing. The UK's importing. I'm one of the top consumers of this stuff, surprisingly. Canada's importing. France is importing. Many countries are importing, but I feel like there's more in the world than there would be room for actually selling it. But I suppose it's one thing I could always make more of. I mean, technically, I would eventually need more later, so... Oh, look, we have some timber mills here and just enough space for two ore mines. That seems to be a pretty decent place to put some. I guess I'll place some on this little island over here, too. I don't see why not. There's, like, none over there, so I might as well just build the little bit I can. Oh, wow. Selling indie goods is actually profitable. Why? It's because of India. Because India is using so much. Hey, Narfi. Uh, thanks. You made it profitable to sell industry goods with all your insane production that you're doing. <laughs> you're building so fucking much at this point. Hydro, you're doing coal now. So much military, everything. You've actually made it profitable to sell indie goods. Good job. Bravo. I'll actually go ahead and place one more indie factory just to get that number up to around 30 here in the homeland. Make me feel a little better with a round number. We could be getting so much timber. I mean, it's on and off profitable to sell. We don't necessarily always make enough of it anyway. The production kind of ebbs and flows. Can't make any of the mills in the towns, which is unfortunate because some of these towns are on very very good spots for placing down timber mills. I think I'll look around for some places where we already have some things like right here and place down a couple timber mills wherever I see fit just to let you guys know what I'm doing. Oh, this is a really good hex for timber, but there's so much other stuff here that I built up. That's fine though. Timber is everywhere. You can always build more of it usually. And we shouldn't actually need that insanely much. One downside to Japan though is there's just so many towns and stuff that it actually is a little bit difficult to go around placing things that cannot be placed on towns. In terms of easy to place timber, I actually found space for 21 mils. So that should certainly help make sure we are always positive on timber in the future. We're only building four hydro, meaning we finished some more hydro, which means it's time to place some more hydro. I guess I'll place another five right here on this hex and get rid of this agriculture to prepare for more hydro later. I've been slowly, slowly getting rid of my agriculture production because a lot of it is actually in very inconvenient places. Man, everybody trying to trade and rip me off for agriculture. Fuck them. <laughs> it's like, hey, it's valued at three million. We want it for eight. Uh, nope. The US has started using more uranium, which is actually making it profitable again to sell uranium. Barely, of course, it's barely profitable and the market itself is still static, but it's good to know but there's room for stuff like that. However, India is also vastly increasing his uranium production, so that's probably not gonna keep up forever. But eventually Russia will start using uranium and hopefully as they start oh no, using more uranium- Oh no, election coming up with I'm 32% in the lead, what will I do? I wouldn't describe that as being 32% in the lead. You're in the lead by about four or 5%. <laughs> well, I meant to say I have 32% and I'm in the lead. Yeah. That's more accurate. Nice rail line in the desert. Thank you. I thought you might like that. Yeah. <laughs> Is it nice playing as Israel at their absolute weakest? Building them up? Oh, hell yeah. Actually having a pretty good time. Even on fastest, with the speed going really well, I have like nothing to do. Because <laughs> I'm just building shit, you know? Yeah, I'm, re I'm only able to recruit like for my reserve, like I think like a hundred a day. <laughs> That's it. I'm up to 600 and almost 50,000 currently. Still more room to get more garrisons, still deploying troops, um, waiting on still a naval and air production before I consider 
even building any more production, slowly expanding my production of certain resources like electricity and I built some timber mills, capped out the oil I can make, which is not a lot, constantly buying agriculture and rubber, slowly making a little more metal ore, just testing that market out. Hey, it's pretty good. I mean, it's not selling a whole lot. It's interesting now because the U.S. isn't a player. And as the U.S., I usually quickly end the metal ore shortage you start with. But the U.S. has the biggest shortage of anybody, and they are now the top importer. So a market which is usually dead right now is actually kind of booming. Yeah, well, as I said, you're a reasonable offer. <laughs> I, I like Cal. I like that. So, Shibi, do you want to take a guess on why he had to describe it specifically as a reasonable offer? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> take a guess. Take a guess. He sent you a few bill instead of a few mil? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not quite like that. So, you know how usually what we do is uh, whenever we're doing, like, the tech trades, like, what you and me usually do is we send each other, like, half the value? Yeah. Well, he sent me a third of the value. <laughs> because half the value is most of his money and so he, he wow. says it's it's reasonable because you know it's not in the mills it's in the bills it's actually worth something you know it would actually be a decent chunk of money and so he's asking me for what looks like 30 fucking technologies offering me a third of the price hmm hmm we're allies. <laughs> yeah, we are. You're right. You're right. Cool, man. Anyway, I'm going to send you something back real quick. Here you go. I'm just going to make that a little bit more reasonable. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, where'd your money go? <laughs> you have almost 30 billion right now. <laughs> What you, I, what's the, what you mad? What's the matter? What? What? what you? What? Huh? <laughs> Confrontational New Yorker noise. I don't even know what I'm saying. Go invade China or Korea. <laughs> Yo, I, I have... I only have... What's my entire land military right now? I have like... I have 66 units total. You can do it. Why would I invade fucking anybody with this? Why would I invade anybody with this? I would need to invade a very tiny place with no military for the, and this to invade anything. What I hope to do, I hope to build up and eventually go for the East Indies. They don't have a military, but they do have garrisons. They would help me extend my control over the Pacific, like I did in the PvP, and give me access to a lot of resources that I have none of, like oil and rubber. But even then, I'm going to need more than this amount of units for that, because... They will have garrisons on the most important part of it all. And then there's so many different islands where I'm going to need to make landings. It's just like, ugh. Bare minimum, every one of the main four islands would need 20 units at least to make any headway of any kind. And the main island itself, however, would probably need more than double that due to the presence of all the garrisons on that island, due to the presence of the capital. And I don't have capital ships with which to really support this invasion. I have one ship right now. I've made one ship since the start of the game, and it is an escort. It's a Shimakaze. I bought the Iowa. I have the Super Yamato, so I'm just like, meh. It's expensive as fuck, but I'll make some. I don't give a fuck. Let's go. Oh, actually, there's something before the Yamato in the tree that my <laughs> AI has defaulted for. It's an Issei. It's making an Issei instead of one of the Yamatos, because it can go way farther than a Yamato, even though it's like 10 years older. Understandable, I suppose. It's also like three times cheaper. Oh, I'm catching up to you guys. 11.2 inflation. <laughs> what the On fuck? Nepal. India declared war in Nepal right when Libya got freedom. That's funny. I was like, what the fuck is happening? India, you're also getting your ass kicked by Nepal. <laughs> yeah, how does it feel to get your ass kicked on, by Nepal? <laughs> you get your ass beat by every little country around you. This is the man we were so worried about in the PvP? This is the man that invaded you and almost wiped you at the beginning of the game without my help? And he can't even take Nepal? Oh my god. What is this? Look how the mighty have fallen so far. I can't even take the alone next time. 
<laughs> Aside from landmass, why did you invade Nepal anyway? No reason, just landmass. <laughs> and I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sucks. You can't even go a fucking year in the game without declaring a war. Every PvP with you in it's gonna be just insane, isn't it? <laughs> No wonder you got so low on all your approval ratings and everything during the PvP. You literally cannot wait a reasonable amount of time before invading a sovereign country.